Welcome to Trial Site News Roundup. Today we'll be talking about Mansoura University in Egypt and their ivermectin based study results in superior viral clearance and peer review status in the Journal of Medical Virology. Then we'll talk about Japan and the chairman of the Tokyo Medical Association, who has gone on the record saying household doctors should prescribe ivermectin. We'll discuss what happened there. And so, from Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and the News Roundup starts now. Back in May of 2020, we here at Trial Site News covered the study titled A Pilot Clinical Trial led by Egypt's Mansoura University, located in the middle of the Nile Delta region. It is a highly ranked academic medical research center within this Middle Eastern nation. The team of investigators there led by two doctors and faculty of medicine professors sought to test whether the combination of nitazoxanide, ribavirin, zinc, and ivermectin cleared SARS-CoV-2, which of course is the virus behind COVID-19. Well, the results are now published in the peer-reviewed Journal of Medical Virology. The study, disclosed initially as both a randomized and sequential clinical trial, later declared non-randomized, were able to enroll 62 in the combination ivermectin-based arm and 51 patients on the standard of care or supportive therapy. The patients in the ivermectin-based treatment group fared far better. By day 7, while there was 0% clearance in the standard of care group, 58.1% of the combination ivermectin-based group experienced viral clearance. By day 15, 73.1% of the ivermectin-based arm were fully cleared of SARS-CoV-2, while only 13.7% of those on the standard of care were cleared of the virus. The cumulative clearance rates by day 15 were 88.7% and 13.7% for ivermectin combination and supportive treatment treatment, respectively. The authors declared that based on the results, the combination of nitazoxanide, ribavirin, and ivermectin plus zinc supplement effectively clear COVID-19 at significantly faster rates than those on the supportive therapy. Now, it should be noted that the ivermectin dosages used in this study were repeated and higher than many of the other studies. Now, it is also worth noting the study limitations. The authors noted that they were not able to ultimately execute on a randomized controlled trial, and critics will undoubtedly point this out. Moreover, the drug combination used was novel, with no in vitro mechanism of action, purely an exploratory situation at this point. So now let's talk about the study drugs. In addition to ivermectin, the team introduced nitazoxanide, an oral antiparasitic drug showing activity against numerous protozoa and helminths. In recent studies, it is suggested that the drug has a possible antiviral activity as well as an immune modulatory effect, suppressing the inflammatory cytokines such as IL-6 and TNF-alpha-4-7. In vitro studies suggested that the drug may have activity against SARS-CoV-2 replication, but there is little evidence as to effectiveness in a clinical environment. A randomized placebo-controlled study in Brazil, for example, showed promise against COVID-19. A later study in Mexico also reaffirms the positive potential for use of nitazoxanide. And then there's ribavirin, which exhibits broad-spectrum antiviral impact against RNA and DNA viruses. The authors noted that the mechanism of action association with ribavirin isn't clear, but could involve inhibition of mRNA, capping and introduction of mutations during viral replication, as well as indirect antiviral activity mediated via immune regulatory pathways, as considered by some researchers. Of course, the benefits of ivermectin have been widely known, although still shunned by a majority of the medical and journalistic establishment. While the drug is approved by the US FDA for use in parasites and used in many countries as an antiparasitic medication, it has exhibited antibacterial and antiviral activity. Of course, the well-known in vitro lab experiments at University of Monash, Australia triggered over 50 formal clinical trials, most of which have shown efficacy with no concerning safety signals. And then there is zinc, which the use is questionable. 
There is no evidence that zinc helps contribute to fighting COVID-19, while the US FDA has sent warning letters to at least five different companies that advertise that a zinc-based product could help prevent or treat COVID-19. The World Health Organization posits more evidence is needed before any claims can be made. The US National Institutes of Health also declares lack of sufficient evidence for the mineral supplement in regards to treating COVID-19. But on the other hand, the authors shared that zinc has well-known antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, and antiviral activities, the latter involving the suppression of RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And of course, we'll keep you posted on this story as it continues to develop. On February 9th, a prominent member of the medical establishment came out in a very public manner in favor of ivermectin as a treatment for not only patients infected with COVID-19, but also their caregivers. A prominent Japanese economics and business-focused publication called Nikkei reported the chairman of the Tokyo Medical Association came out and recommended the emergency use of drugs such as ivermectin administered to those COVID-19 patients, declaring they exhibit efficacy toward towards preventing disease progression in other nations. Now, clearly, Dr. Ozaki falls on the side of a rapidly growing group of physicians and researchers that align with significant meta-analysis involving dozens of randomized controlled trials, observational studies, and case series around the world. Dr. Ozaki also calls out for Japan health authorities to use dexamethasone, shown to help lower the death rate in certain more severe situations in hospitalized patients. Meanwhile, back here in the United States, the National Institutes of Health, via Active, continues to support billions of dollars of funding to various therapies to take on COVID-19 while mass vaccination efforts unfold. We've documented how billions of dollars have poured into just a handful of vaccines and investigational therapies while the data for ivermectin continues to mount. There appears to be a disturbing chasm in the allocation of taxpayer dollars. The public research agency has an obligation to support pharmaceutical companies' quest for novel therapeutics, as well as repurposed generic ones, particularly in a public health crisis with nearly half a million people dead. Now, it is worth noting that pharmaceutical companies have accomplished some heroic feats during the pandemic. The mRNA-based vaccine development represents a historical milestone. However, it is not okay if taxpayer dollars are used to subsidize such accumulation, while at the same time other economical approaches are purposefully ignored by representative officials and government health authorities in the midst of a deadly pandemic. After all, the ivermectin data indicating some efficacy has accumulated for months now. The development of therapies and pursuit of generics should not be reduced to an either-or false dilemma. Both should be happening. Now, as we have reported, meta-analysis from researchers in both the United Kingdom and America reveal powerfully positive impact of ivermectin. A panel of experts from the U.S. National Institutes of Health COVID-19 treatment guidelines finally changed their position on the drug from recommending against, with the exception of research, to a neutral stance awaiting further study data. A common critique embraced by the NIH and other research agencies is the quality associated with the underlying ivermectin studies, while other researchers have declared that there is sufficient evidence, including those meta-analysis authors such as Dr. Andrew Hill, Dr. Tess Lowry, and here in the United States, the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance. And so, the story continues to expand and grow, and as always, we will continue to keep you updated as it progresses. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close. As always, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and this has been an episode of the News Roundup. I will see you all next time.